insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Your hosts, Joseph and Michelle Whalen, a husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics, are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment. This is episode 28, Jedi, Middays, and Dead Names. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my brilliant and beautiful co-host, Michelle Whalen. Hello. Yes, that would be you. <laughs> Cue, please. I was waiting for you to say, you know, your normal, how are you? And How are you? I am fantastic. Thanks for asking. <sighs> wow. Okay. You think by <laughs> episode 28, we'd have this down pat by now. I think it's the sugar from the donuts this morning. That, that must be it. Okay. So, busy one today. Mm-hmm. So, in our Disney Detective, we have some Obi-Wan news. We have some new uh, uncharacteristically discounted tickets from Disney News. Then we have a cute little uh, article about a mom, what moms do on first days of school with Disney. Then in our entertainment news, we have uh, the passing of a very well-respected actor. Then we'll talk about uh, some... Respect that IMDb is finally giving the trans actors. And then we'll talk about Some John. Star Wars stuff. Can I introduce the, you do everything else on this show. Could I introduce them at least? Jeez, stealing my thunder. <laughs> and it was like a Star Wars one. Like you could have taken the Barbie one instead. I'm sorry. <sighs> so disappointed. <laughs> I get no respect. Anyway, are you ready to get into it now? Now that you've you've started me off on a bad note here. And we'll go for Disney Detective. To you, my dear. You're going to be all grumpy now. Yes, I am. <laughs> Um, So this was kind of exciting news that came out. Uh, So one of the other new shows that Disney Plus is going to be doing will be an Obi-Wan Kenobi live action. And they have obviously tapped Ewan McGregor to reprise the role. Um, So no other details has really come out. But obviously, if you're a fan of Star Wars, you know that he played in the original um, not the original trilogy, the prequels of the trilogies um, in Phantom Menace, Attack of the Clones, and Revenge of the Sith. Um, so there's obviously been some talk going back and forth about him reprising the role, and now that they have Disney Plus coming with you know all this new content, this is one of the new shows that they're uh, bringing up. I find it interesting that he's going to come back and essentially do a TV role. Mm-hmm. Uh, he has graduated to the A plus status of of not being one to do television. Right, right. So if they bring this back, I don't, I don't know. It's going to be a full series. I can see right, it being I can a see mini series. Being a mini series, like a six part, you know, epic, right type. And honestly, I don't think there's enough story there Mm -hmm. to make it a full series. Right, because where does it start? Do you go back, you know, his more younger years, or do you go from... The the talk of the movie was supposed to be picking up after Revenge of the Sith. And before What happened between Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope? Okay, I can see that. There were several novels already written for that time Mm -hmm. period. Um, whether or not they'll take the story from that or not is, okay. is another another case. But they've got plenty of story to work with mm-hmm. there for a movie. Right, right. I don't think there's plenty to work with there for a, a continuous series. series. Right. Okay. Um, 
as a secondary note to this, uh, I did read an article this week that Disney is um, canceling or ending Star Wars Resistance after its second season. Oh, okay. Um, I don't know if this is a move to uh, get it off because it's on Disney XD now, so okay. it's on Disney's channel. Right, right. Or um, to move it to. There's been no talk of it being moved to Disney Plus. Mm-hmm. So I'm not sure if the storyline that it's going down is not supportable with the new movie coming out or not. Okay. Because uh, there's a lot of crossover between Resistance and the new, the latest trilogy. Okay. Um, but it came as a shocker to a lot of people that hmm. they were ending it after two seasons, especially considering they're bringing back Clone Wars for its last season, which right. they had canceled midway through production. I was going to say, and that was canceled a while back, too, Yeah, I mean, so. that was years ago it was canceled. Right, right. So they're bringing that back on Disney XD. Hmm. Um, but it's entirely possible that because Obi-Wan's coming back, they didn't want to support production on, you know, four shows, I guess they have at that point. Because you figure they've got The Mandalorian. Right. They've got the Rogue One spinoff with right. Diego Luna. Right. They'll have the Obi-Wan series. So that's three series right there, which is the most TV series they've ever had in production. Mm-hmm. I mean, the most... Well, and are they going to have them all in production at the same time? Or are they kind of scattering them, kind of like what Netflix does? You know, it's like you don't have, you know, this season, will, this series will go for this long. And then so many months later, they show well, this one. the airing of them might not be simultaneous. Okay, but they're But because the production, scre- uh, the production schedules are actually so long, especially for Mandalorian. Okay. They finished the first season. They've actually started working on the second season second of Mandalorian season. already. Okay. Um, I haven't heard anything on the production schedule of the okay. Re- uh, Rogue One spinoff mm-hmm. yet, though. So that's that's three series right now you're working on, whereas if you go back far enough back, they've only ever had two Star Wars shows in production at most. Mm-hmm. And this is back before Disney even acquired them. Right. When they had... Uh, the Caravan of Carriage series and the Droids Animated series okay. going together in the 80s. Mm-hmm. Uh, so having three series together, you know, I have to also wonder if this is saturation again. Right, right. You know, you saw what happened when Solo came out. Right. I mean, Solo just wasn't a very good movie. Right, but the fact that it was, you know, every year there was a Star Wars movie, whereas for so many years you had such a long break yeah. in between the movies that it made you, you know, want to see. Yeah, I mean, traditionally, you know. the formula was every three years a Star Wars movie. Right. You know, 77, 80, 83 is what set the pace. Right. You know, your your next trilogy kind of went off of that slightly with a with a slightly different schedule. But I think that's the magic formula because it gives people enough time to... To digest. Exactly. Exactly. You know, everything. But, yeah. you know, Disney's trying to keep Star Wars to a Marvel-esque mm. universe. And the thing with, I mean, it works with Marvel because there's so much story out there. And there's so tell. many different characters that, right. you know, everybody kind of knows. Whereas with Star Wars, you have your, your core and then now you have all these like offshoots, but you only know about those offshoots if... You know, you read the comics or read the books or, you know, they're uh, for a lot of people, you know, a lot of other people, they're kind of obscure characters and nobody knows who they are. And it's like, well, why do I want to watch a movie or, you know, TV series about this if I don't know, you know, anything about it? And one more thing I did want to add to this story before we moved on Mm -hmm. was there was an update uh, back before Last Jedi dropped. Uh, Disney had announced that they were going to allow Ryan Johnson <laughs> to do a new trilogy that was unrelated to the Skywalker saga. Mm-hmm. When uh, Last Jedi dropped, and we'll say to mixed reception by the mm-hmm. Star Wars fans, I thought it was horrendous. Right. I still do. I still am curious how J.J. Abrams is going to pull this stinker out of the He's uh, going to save the game. day. Um, <laughs> but... There was an announcement that Disney is still planning to let Ryan Johnson move forward with his non-Skywalker trilogy. I don't know why. 
Okay, well, if you're going to ruin it, pick a time period that nobody cares about <laughs> right. and ruin that. And nobody cares. And if you watch it, you go, eh. Right. right, exactly. I mean, I definitely don't think Ryan Johnson is the future of Star Wars. If anything, you know, he is the downfall of what everyone already knows and loves. Mm. So the next thing we had on Disney Detectives was Midday Magic. Tell us about that. So this was something that just came up uh, during the week that they're going to be offering um, an after 12 p.m. park ticket. Um, and again, this is kind of very unusual for them to, you to know, offer something discounted. <laughs> to yeah, offer something is. discounted. Now, if you've ever gone down to the Orlando area and done um, a convention in the area or done a convention at Disney, they do actually offer discounted park tickets for people that are attending conventions. So they have like an after 2 p.m. ticket and an after 4 p.m. ticket. Like when for we people. went to Celebration. Right, when we went to Celebration. And also when, um, years ago, when I went down to a convention for work, we actually had right. gotten those convention right. tickets, you know, as well. So, you know, if, if you happen to be in the know, they do you know, offer this, but this is something that they're they're doing for the fall. Um, and um, it's, you can do just a regular base ticket or you can do a park hopper ticket, um, but you have to do a minimum of, of two days and it's up to four days. And depending on what day you actually pick to do, the price could actually range from $81 a day up to 100 and change um, a day. So it's one of those you have to go onto the website. So if you go to DisneyWorld.Disney.Go.com um, and look for tickets, and it's under the Midday Magic Tickets, there's a whole little website. Um, now, you can still do Fast Passes, but obviously... It has to be for an Obviously, after there's 12. Not be anything <laughs> available. Well, no, because it's still going to be you're still going to be able to make your your fast pass reservation 30 days out, just like anybody else. You just can't do a fast pass that's before. Oh, so they are like doing noon. it in advance. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, it's still just like anything else. Um, it's good for all four of the parks, so you don't have to designate which park you're you're going to. Um, when you when you purchase it, you just pick which days that you're going to buy it, and it expires seven days from the first day that you use it. So, you know, you can't use one day, you know, and then three weeks later use your second so day. So how much of a discount are we talking here? Oh, it's a, it's a pretty big discount because when we were looking, um, tickets were up to $150 for right, one day. For one day, yeah. So, you know, you're almost getting two days for the price of, of one. Now, obviously, the more days you buy, the cheaper it's going to be. So for two days, they're saying from $81. If you're doing four days, it's from $74. So that and is that's a... per day. That's per day. So that is a, a significant, you know, uh, a discount. And the nice thing is, you know, now you have Animal Kingdom that's open late. Um, so you can can you combine this with, with extra magic hours if you're staying on the property? You can, but only for the p.m. extra magic hours. You can't do it for the early morning so extra hours. So they don't let hours. you in it. 11 or something like that. Right, right. You'd have to, you know, 12 o'clock is when your ticket is good for, but if the park happens to close it at 10 and extra magic hours are until midnight, okay. you can stay until midnight. And I'm assuming with special events like the Christmas party and Halloween, you can still combine these with that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you still could. Um, you know, but at that point for the Christmas parties, you're usually getting in... Four o'clock. Usually. At four o'clock. So here, you know, you're only getting really four hours, you know, extra on top of it. Right. Now, obviously, the thing to do is if you're planning on going, you know, from now until now, the tickets, you can only buy them up until December 15th. They aren't offering them because it's a fall promotion, obviously, because after the 15th is is their busiest Christmas season. So it, they're not going to do anything discounted. But my suggestion is if you are going to look at these tickets before you buy them, you do want to look at what the park hours are because the Halloween party, um, the Halloween party would be going on, you know, for the, the beginning of the fall. Right. And then you have the Christmas party. And when those parties are going on, Magic Kingdom closes 
at 6 p.m. So you want to make so, sure you're maximizing your... So just to clarify, when you buy these, do you have to designate the days that you're yes, using Yes, you have to pick purchase? the days. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they won't let you pick anything after December 15th. Right. When I had looked on the website, it basically this promotion only goes until December so this 15th. Is, so this is, a, this is a limited time mm-hmm. promotion. And maybe it's one of those things where once they see how it goes, then... You know, they might offer it again, but it was interesting to see because, again, you did have to already pick the days. And I know sometimes when we decide to do a a trip, we know, okay, well, we're going to be down for, you know, this whole week. We're going to do three days, but we're not necessarily sure which day we're going to go. And there have been times when we've changed our minds where we've made fast pass arrangements and we've changed them at the last minute because oh we weren't feeling well we wanted to do this instead right. where well and here we, you're kind of locked done that, in we've done it as annual <clears throat> pass holders true which you've got a lot more freedom to come and go as you please right then. that is true so here you know and it was weird because like when i was looking like monday was 81 dollars, but tuesday was 84 dollars or something it was just weird how yeah. you know i could understand the weekend being more money than you know like your tuesday through thursday but it was just odd how looking oh, at you know, it but kudos to disney for for giving you another option here yeah, you know, yeah, for, you know, for, for and especially since so many people are saying, you know, Disney's getting to the point where they're pricing you out. You know, you're well, not. Well, and be it makes me go. wonder if uh, the blowback that they got from the recent ticket increases that could be and the that decrease could totally in attendance be. might be signaling a change for Disney. Yeah, so you can do regular base tickets and you can actually do hopper tickets as well, and the hopper tickets allow you to do multiple parks within the same within the same day so okay so what else do we have for disney detective so the last disney story which was just kind of like a really kind of cute piece was mom tape takes epic photos alone at disney after her kids head off to school for the first day uh this was on abcnews.com um and so this this mom they app happened to live in Orlando. Uh, so it wasn't like she flew down from, you know, New York to, to drop, drop, <laughs> drop the, the kids, kids to off. And fly to Florida. Because <laughs> that would be really cool. I, I would totally do that. Um, so she decided, you know, I dropped the kids off at school. What am I going to do? I'm going to go to, to I'm Disney. Going to Disney World. <laughs> I'm going to Disney World. Um, so for those of you that don't know, Disney World now, it, it's very popular. They have these celebration pins. So, you know, it started out with happy birthday pins. Then they have uh, anniversary pins. And then they have for people that have just gotten married. And then they have a, a generic one that just says, I'm celebrating. And then the cast member will write you know, a little saying afterwards. So if you see, um, you know, (laughs) we have a a picture of it. So she put, you know, I'm celebrating the first day of school. And what she decided to do was actually just go around to different cast members and get her picture taken with, with various cast members, some being characters. So like Snow White, but then she also did, you know, some, you know, custodial staff too. And, you know, basically went around and, and everybody kind of smiled. Um, but the, the best reaction was actually when she went to the fairy godmother and showed her, and she just got like the biggest hug and the biggest reaction of, you know, what she was there. <laughs> celebrating so it was it was kind of cool um you know and and she was saying you know we live so close um there are lots of times when you know after dinner you know we'll take the boys to you know to disney just to ride on a couple of rides or we'll do dinner there or if i want to go for you know a nice walk i'll go to the resorts and go for a walk so you know being a local obviously has the advantage. So this was just kind of, you know, again, a really cool thing because a lot of kids are starting to go back to school and and stuff. So I could I could totally relate. See, this I'm pretty sure you just put this in here so that I didn't bash <laughs> Disney this week because I've been doing it the last three weeks. <laughs> I needed that Disney feel-good story. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> but it's funny because, you. you know, as we were, we happened to be talking about this earlier today, um, Great Adventure, I grew up, in the same town as Six Flags Great Adventure in in Jackson, New Jersey. And for many years, we were 
pass holders and we would do that too we would you know at night what do you want to do you know oh the park's open for a couple more hours and we would just go you know to get dinner or to watch the fireworks or yeah. you know obviously not to the level of of Disney, but you know. Well, and again, that's sort of the same thing we do when we're down there with the annual passes. Right. It's, well, what do you want to do? Well, you know, it's it's six o'clock at night. We just finished in dinner. Uh, let's go walk around the Magic Kingdom. Right. You know, exactly. Let's just go hang out. Right. Right. So you kind of have that feel. So it, it, again, it was a cute little. Well, you know, that's cute. What am, What am I going to do? So. So that was all we had for Disney Detective, uh-huh. right? That is it. So we will come back with our. Entertainment News of the Week. Mm -hmm. Go for entertainment news? Sure. So a sad story that came out um, last night was that Peter Fonda, um, the son of obviously Henry Fonda and sister of Jane Fonda, had passed away um, from complications from lung cancer. Uh, He was 79 years old. Uh, the family confirmed the, the sad news in a statement, um, which has been all over the place. So people reported it, uh, Vanity Fair, you know, all the different news outlets. Um, and they made the announcement that is with deep sorrow that we share the news of Peter Fonda has passed away, the family said. He passed away peacefully on Friday morning, the, August 16th at 11.05 at his home in Los Angeles, surrounded by his family. The official cause of death was respiratory failure due to lung cancer. In one of the saddest moments of our lives, we are not able to find the appropriate words to express the pain in our hearts, but as we grieve, we ask that you respect our privacy. Um, And they go on to... um, say that while we mourn the loss of this sweet and gracious man, we also wish for all to celebrate uh, his spirit and his love of life. The family uh, finished with, and in honor of Peter, please raise a glass to freedom. So I thought that was a a nice little... um, That is a nice gesture. A nice little gesture. And, you know, obviously he, he came, you know, he was Henry Fonda's, you know, son so he was kind of in the spotlight you know at a young age but finally came into his own in 1969 when he um was in easy rider he was one of the producers of it that kind of helped to to bring about his career um and then you know later on went and and did more producing obviously more acting you know as well obviously you know his sister uh, jane was you know, obviously in the family business as well. That's, you know, and that's the thing. When you have a father like like that, that mm-hmm. is a tough legacy to have to try to... Oh, absolutely. One, and, live up to, and two, distinguish yourself. In. Right. And, you know, one of the other things in, in looking back, you know, it was a very um, troubled childhood as well because their mother um, committed suicide when... Uh, Peter was 10 and Jane was 12 Mm -hmm. and it became one of those things that nobody wanted to talk about Um, you know for years he was told by his grandmother that his mother had had a heart attack and it wasn't until you know years later that he and his father actually kind of reconciled and and had a heart to heart and you know came to terms with everything that had happened you know during his childhood so it's tough yeah so well, that's sad. Well, um, farewell, Mr. Falna, and we wish the family well. Mm-hmm. So moving right along. Moving right along. So we also have some uh, breakthrough, I guess, policy changes mm-hmm. yeah. at IMDB uh, with regard to uh, transactors. Tell us a little bit about that. So this story came from pinknews.co.uk, and it was um, that IMDb is finally going to allow trans actors to remove their dead names. Now, for those that don't know what the term dead name is. Which I have to say, I didn't before this. Uh, show and I do now, and I and I am much more educated now. Right, and that was why I wanted to make sure that I included this uh, in in our podcast. So, a dead name is the birth name of someone who has changed it. The term is specifically used. Uh, in the LGTBQ community by people who are transgendered and elect to go by their chosen name 
rather than what their given name was. So that's what okay. that's what the term is. Um, so the Amazon-based company uh, told Variety on Tuesday that IMDb is now going to permit the removal of birth names if the birth name is not broadly publicly known by the person no longer using that name. Um, so the announcement came uh, after a coalition of LGP, LGTBQ groups, including GLAD, joined together to have this changed. So now IMDB will now allow the stars and or their representatives to make the edits on the pages. Um, and one of the interesting things is that they were talking about, the article talked about how Wikipedia actually does allow, has, has already allowed this, and they actually, for some transgendered um, actors, they actually have blocked pages because Wikipedia is one of those pages where anybody can go in and, right, and make right. edits, and they actually had put blocks on certain uh, pages so that nobody could go in, you know, so and troll it. For IMDb, how does this actually work? Because you could have uh, Bruce Jenner, let's right. say, for instance. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know how many credits he would have had to his name, but... He, you know, he had a lot. He, he did have a lot. Right. So all the things that he's done in the decades prior to going through the transition, right? do they all get edited or just his page get edited? Well, I think in reading through, it kind of almost sounded like it was going to be at the discretion of the actor. Okay. How they would want to be seen because, you know, like, um, you know, one of the actors who, who mentioned that, you know, was speaking up about this he had already transitioned before he became an actor. Right. So he right. didn't so have he had no anything. To go back right. To. So he didn't have anything. They said that that was really going to be for somebody that had a career in, as one name and was now going to change to another. So now, does this cover just actors or is this producers, writers, directors? Anybody. Everything? You know, anybody that has okay. any sort of credit, you know, you're going to be able to go through and. And the reason yeah, I asked the, that, the, the, the first question is it, it could be confusing going back and looking at credits uh, for work that someone did back in, say, the 80s. Right. And they were known as that actor, that name back right. then. And, when you and I and, could see, you know, maybe having something where if you clicked on, you know, Joe Smith and Joe Smith is now Josephine. You know, like if you click on the old link, you know, right. from almost like how they annotate married names and and right uh, maiden names, right? And maybe that's what they would do is that you know they would click that you okay. know to bring up and you know, you know what the, I, I think the biggest thing I guess I I could see about this is you know it may seem like a a small mm -hmm. thing to do, but you know in a grand scheme of things this is huge. This is how. The, you know. You're you're actually seeing somebody for who they they are they truly are right. You're acknowledging you know? that person for who they are exactly. Now. You and know, and I think that's that's a huge step. Mm -hmm. You know, for our society to say, okay, you know, you are now this person. Now we acknowledge who you are. We acknowledge the personality that you are mm -hmm. now, and all the accomplishments that you have now mm -hmm. are this person here, right? Um, right. And I think it's a step in the right direction. Mm -hmm. I think, Absolutely. I think there's Absolutely. a lot more steps that need to happen. Mm -hmm. um, but it's definitely moving down the right path. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's very cool. Mm -hmm. um, oh, look at that. There's a Star Wars article. Wow. <laughs> Who would have thought? <laughs> Gee, I didn't didn't know that. What? You didn't what? You didn't know? You didn't prep? Why don't, why don't you tell us about the Star Wars article that you ruined for me earlier? There? Oh, my goodness. We're back to that. So, John Williams will score The Rise of Skywalker, and it will feature every Star Wars theme in the score. Well, then what's he got to, to score? All he has to do is go back and... <laughs> Come up with a hit track well, at that you point. Got, you got to mash it together. So the legendary composer will. So this is basically John Williams mixtape. <laughs> that, that's kind of cool, actually. When you think about it, that is that is awesome. He could just use my playlist on my Flex server. <laughs> he sure 
Good, good. So the legendary composer will deliver a whopping 135 minutes of music to conclude the Star Wars saga. Culminating a saga that began in 1977 would be a daunting prospect for anyone except for John Williams. Um, the final, the finale of Skywalker, the so- yeah, I can talk. The Skywalker saga will bring his tenure as a composer of the Star Wars galaxy to a bittersweet end. Well, you know, it's like Carrie Fisher said about George Lucas's writing. You can write this shit, but nobody can actually read it. <laughs> <laughs> so William has been the composer, obviously, for every single episode of the Skywalker saga and has his masterful themes obviously have become the lifeblood of the franchise. Um, so he's actually um, been been scoring, and the idea is that um, there's going to be bits and pieces of other famous scores kind of weaved in. Jaws. I want to hear Jaws in there. <laughs> no, not Jaws. Just... And Raiders of the Lost Star. No. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Stop. Um... So, you know, uh, so the, the one article, uh, so this article, um, they were actually interviewing his brother, Don Williams, um, and he said that he basically has 135 minutes worth of music for this upcoming movie, and they have about 34 minutes in the canon at this point. Um, so it would suggest that most of the scores are usually about two hours and, and 15 minutes. Um so the average Star Wars movie has been about two hours, um, you know, with the most detailed soundtrack actually being Phantom Menace, the uh, deluxe edition. Um, so this should be kind of, you know, this will be a little bit longer. So Well, there's a lot of cleanup that J.J. has to do over Ryan Johnson's Right, exactly. Of, so um, so uh, his brother had said, but I can tell you that every theme that you heard is going to be compiled into this last effort. From Leia's theme, Yoda's, Phantom, Darth, it's all going to be in there. And in his usual s- style, he'll actually be hiding some of it. So you're going to have to go back and listen, yeah. you know, for them. Um, so it, it'll be, you know, interesting. Um, so it sounds like, you know, JJ Abrams and John Williams are going to actually give, you know, a, a great send off, hopefully. Um, and Star Wars Rise of the Sk- of uh, Skywalker will be uh, December 20th. So not that much longer. Uh, well, and, you know, go. I can't help but think, given the last couple of weeks of entertainment news, and the number of lawsuits that people have been getting hit with for reusing someone so else's is work. So John Williams going to sue himself? Is, is Disney going to, like, sue that's funny, John never Williams for using his, you know, like, like, that's a lawsuit just waiting to happen there. That's right? funny. That is funny. You know, it goes back to Creedence suing uh, yeah. John Fogarty for, for copy, copying himself. His, himself, yeah. So, uh, Okay, like it's gonna be awesome. I don't think right. there's any doubt I, about I, I that. I think it's so. you know, and and now you're even more you know. It's like it's yeah. school starting back up. Oh, that means well, we're getting and that's the to... thing. It's like th- I didn't have a problem with the music in right. Last Jedi. I had a problem right. with the directing and the story and how much Ryan Johnson screwed everything up in Last Jedi. So right, right. So the music's going to be great, I have no doubt. This is this little bit of information is helpful, but JJ really needs to pull this franchise out of the, I, I out think of the he trash will. right I think, now. I think he knows he has to, because if he doesn't, then you know everybody's going to be, you know, he's dead to us. You End know? the Skywalker saga on a high note, mm-hmm. and then let Ryan Johnson bastardize it from there. It's, it's not my Star Wars anymore after that. Right, right. And Ryan Johnson can do whatever the hell he wants with it from there. Uh, One last cute little Star Wars story. And another Star Wars story, yeah. See, look at that. Look at that. It's like a Star Wars podcast it without, it, without it being one. We'll have to work on that. <laughs> so what Insights do we got into now? Star Wars. As it gets closer, there we go. <laughs> Insights Everything. into Star Wars. There, there we, we go. go. So Mattel has a new Star Wars Barbie, and they are exquisite. So if you want to bring them up... Um, So when you think Star Wars Barbie as a concept, you probably think, oh, we're just going to put, you know, Barbie in cosplay and, you know, call it a day, which they've done before because there has been the Princess Leia. Let me just chime in real quick. The R2 dress, 
not like it at all. <laughs> yeah, that one is a little a little weird. Um, so Mattel and Lucasfilms announced a new collaboration series that will see three new Star Wars themed Barbie dolls hit the store shelves later this year. Um, and this same uh, collaboration uh, recently did a Ziggy Stardust Barbie, um, a 13th Doctor Barbie, and even uh, Dana Scully um, Barbie from, from X-Men. Um, not X-Men, X-Files. X-Files. Um, yeah. So the dolls are, you know, from what you can see, they're not just a Barbie in, you know, a cosplay outfit. It's a very exquisite outfit. It's a very detailed outfit. Um, if you look at, um, if you go back to Princess Leia, she actually has, like, her purse has the Rebellion logo, the logo on it. Yeah, on it. Like. Um, and then she still has the, the buns, but they're, like, a more classic look about the the hair. Um, if you look at the R2, um, not the R2, the, the Darth Vader, um, you know, the, the breast, um panel uh is is like her little purse let's call it the chest panel sorry the chest panel (laughs) whatever the chest panel you know is a little purse and you know it's kind of attached to the chest though i don't know it it, you know it it, the one person in the the article said it was very edna mole from (laughs) from the incredibles you know look to it um and then the the r2d2 one was a, a bit more punk Lady Gaga-ish, I guess. Um, and what's neat is that her purse is C-3PO. What part of him, though? Well, I think it's his head, I think, or so something. So she ripped off <laughs> she C-3PO's ripped off head, head and she keeps her package. So it was there. just, you know, if you're into, you know, so it's it's not just, you know, Barbie in dress up it's glamorous you know barbie so how much are these supposed to go for at retail well because these are glamorous barbies uh they are going to be going for a hundred dollars a piece of course so yeah these are the collectible ones not like you know the ones you just kind of well and i can totally see us you know i could see me getting the darth vader one for our daughter and it sits on the shelf right right or sits you know or it sits in the corner in, in and, the studio. <laughs> and nobody. we don't have enough stuff in here already <laughs> right or you got darth vader you know maybe darth needs a girlfriend and he's she's yeah, we're gonna have to dedicate a podcast just to how the studio is set up at some point yeah and and do a little tour like a little special edition there you go maybe that'll be our special 30th you know anniversary episode. <laughs> our 30 <laughs> god if we make it 30 years <laughs> holy crap crud yeah <laughs> So that is it for all of my entertainment and Disney updates. And oh boy, how entertaining it was. Uh, Shall we move on to our insightful picks? Let's finish off with our insightful picks. And I turn it over to you, my dear. So my insightful pick is a new show that actually just aired uh, last Tuesday on The CW um, from 9 to 10. It is called Mysteries Decoded. Um, And what happens is over the course of the hour, um, it's kind of done in an investigative documentary style um, where they delve deep into America's greatest unsolved mysteries, exploring newly discovered evidence and utilizing high-tech tools to reopen these cases. That sounds dangerously close to a documentary. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, So from Area 51 to the Salem Witch Trials, each investigation is led by Jennifer Marshall, who is an accomplished U.S. Navy veteran turned private investigator, as she mobilizes a team to embark on the quest to bring closure to these long lingering historical puzzles. Um, So, this past week's episode was actually Lizzie Borden. And what was interesting about it was this, this woman, Jennifer Marshall, she's kind of the lead investigator. She's very much a skeptic when it comes to, to different things. So they had a local um, medium come in to to kind of, you know, help with things. And, oh, I feel this, I feel that. And Jennifer's just kind of sitting there like, I don't feel anything. You know, so it was kind of interesting to, to see that. And then at one point, 
Um, they went to another location and they had a local group of ghost hunters come in and do part of an investigation with that. So, you know, so it wasn't all like a ghost hunter show and it wasn't all historical stuff. It was like a little bit of everything. And then she actually had like a forensic specialist, you know, come in and they went through the court documents and, you know, and, and kind of went through all the things and, you know, said how many loopholes there were in different things. And basically at the end of it, they concluded that Lizzie Borden did in fact kill her parents that the I knew she did it all along <laughs> like one of the interesting things was that like she you know somebody they had said you know like when the police came like she didn't have any blood on her dress but that she also looked very full and like um like her dress seemed very full and what the the one investigator had found out was that she had multiple dresses made in different sizes so she wore this thinner dress that's what she killed her parents in then put another dress over so she was wearing the bloody dress with so the she police. had this all planned out that far in advance yeah and that's what they were saying is that when you kind of look back and piece things together she really did have this all planned out and that there were things that like the basically the day that her parents were were killed was kind of the final day because she had actually tried killing them a few days before she had actually tried poisoning them with arsenic and it didn't work and then she tried doing something else so then she figure what lead poisoning was best with the you know well because what was supposed to happen was that day they were supposed to go to the bank <clears throat> and she was supposed to be taken off of the will and she wasn't supposed to be getting uh... an inheritance so when you look back at all of this evidence and you go uh Okay, so you know, years later, now it, so well, it was, sounds interesting. So it was again, it was a totally different take because it wasn't just the investigation part. They had the little bit of the ghost hunter stuff, and you know, different things you know involved. So very cool. Very, it was one of those things. It, it definitely kept my attention, and um, you know, interesting to see their you know their other episodes uh, after this one. So cool. Mysteries decoded on the CW. Very cool pick. Thank you. So my pick this week is Shocker, a documentary. <gasps> oh, my gosh. Um, and you know how you can tell it's a documentary? Because it's on the Smithsonian Channel, <laughs> which I didn't realize it was on when I told you about it before. Right, because you told me it was some other channel, and I tried looking it up, and I couldn't find it. <laughs> well, there are so many channels to doc with documentaries That anymore. is true. That so is this true. is Mystic Britain. <clears throat> Over Britain's tens of thousands of years of civilization, its history has played host to a series of strange and mysterious rituals, events, and cultures. British talk show host Clive Anderson and anthropologist Mary Ann Akota travel across the UK to explore the sacred sites and supernatural beliefs of the ancient Britons. By examining their mystic places and practices, they hope to unlock the secrets of their ancestors and better understand the worlds in which they lived. Uh, so it's it's a new series. It's four episodes in right now. Right. Uh, one I've episode. only seen one. Right. You saw Witches and Demons? Witches and Demons. That was the only one that was showing up on demand at the time. Right. So in Witches and Demons, they go into... Uh, Black Death Rituals to uh, Henry VIII Sorcery Ban and James the first, first Witch Hunts, which helped to uh, uh, emphasize uh, oh, Good Omens. Yes. Because we talked, they, they explored that in Good Omens too. And Doctor Who. And Doctor Who, yeah. <laughs> and Doctor Who. Um, and you get to witness medieval Britain's war on evil. Mm -hmm. uh, they do the Rollwright Witch, uh, where they examine a 6,000-year-old Rollwright stones and the legendary tales of witches and fairies and druids. Then uh, this week's was Hadrian's Mystic Wall, uh, how the battle between the druid-led Brits and the superstitious Romans led to the building of the massive mystical wall. And the first one in the series was The Revenants, uh, enter the abandoned village of Warren Percy, home to the mysterious pit of human bones. 
Um, and what's neat is there's science behind it. Mm-hmm. They go to these places. You see what these places look like. You, right. you almost feel like you get to touch these pieces mm-hmm. of history. Right. Um, but it's not all stuffy science stuff. Right. I mean, Clive Anderson, a lot of people may know him from uh, Whose Line Is It Anyway mm-hmm. um, in the in the UK. Uh, he's hilarious, mm-hmm. you know, and yeah. it's, it's the same dry humor that mm-hmm. you're used to. You know, he shows up at the uh, the the Rollwright Stones, and there's a bunch of people doing a, a Druid reenactment there, and you could just imagine how his contemporary humor mm-hmm. is 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 you know experiencing this. He's right, right. He's saying and concluding a lot of the same things that I would say myself. Right. Like, really, is like like we're all dressed up for this. Is this really what we're going to do here, <laughs> right, guys? Right, you know? right. So there's an element of humor to it, mm-hmm. there's science to it, um, and there's history to mm-hmm. it. Yeah, well, like I said, I saw the Witches and Demons one, and the one the part of it was they had him get dressed in the uh, Black Death yes. outfit. Yes, Of And it was kind of interesting because you're looking at it and you're going, oh my God, that's so weird looking, but it had practicality to it or like at least they thought it did. right well they had the long nose so that you know and you, they would put the herbs at the tip of it you know, and they thought that would filter any of the right evil and spirits the, you know in. obviously the gloves were meant so that you know so it, it and he was saying how ridiculous he looked you know right. in it and everything but it, it had the practicality to it for yeah. for the time so it was it was interesting, so I'm looking forward to, to seeing the other uh, episodes. It's it's a very interesting show in the way that they're kind of like your pick where they assemble things and present them in a way that you don't normally mm-hmm. see them in most right. documentaries. Right, right, right. So Mystic Britain is on the Smithsonian Channel. Check your local listings, because when I went to look at the listings, the times were erratic, I'll mm-hmm. say. If you have um, a DVR, you're probably... <laughs> yes, and they do stream them off the website, too, oh, if you want okay. to watch them off the website. Good to know. So, that was my pick of the week. Uh, did we have any afterthoughts? I don't think we did. Okay. So, then I think we are done for the week. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're out of here. We're out of here. Thanks a lot. Have a good week, everyone. Bye. Bye.